السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers, my sisters, each time we have a motivational evening, certain faces are here all the time. So, mashallah, mashallah, I think if this was a football club, you'd be my, probably, probably, my greatest fans. But the last match was lost. May Allah grant us ease. My brothers, my sisters, you know the Prophet Yusuf or Joseph, may peace be upon him, alayhi salam. That story has in it tremendous benefit many lessons a lot of motivation and it is repeated because Allah Almighty says that it is the best of stories the best of what you could narrate in terms of a story wherein you are going to derive real life benefit look one of the primary points that we actually learn when Allah Almighty has written great success in your life, when Allah Almighty has written great success in your life, perhaps you will have to go through much negativity according to you to get to the ultimate success that was destined for you. So what you're going through right now is just the path. The path to what? to the ultimate success. Look at Yusuf alayhi salam. Each time we read the story and look at it from a different angle, a different dimension, it impacts upon our lives. What I'm about to say today, I can guarantee you that most of us, if not all of us, would feel, yes, this relates to me. What is success according to you and I? Well, as believers on one hand, there is success of the hereafter that is far more important than the success of this world. But the success of this world is very important for us because we are human beings living on earth. We'd like to have something, we'd like to be okay, we'd like to be comfortable, we'd like to have ease, we'd like to have things going our way to a certain degree and we know that the Almighty is in control because we're believers. And we also know that during this or in this journey, on this path, we're going to face challenges one after the other because that's the promise of Allah. We're going to test all of you. But Yusuf alayhi salam, if you look at the end of his story, what was there? What was there? Success. Wouldn't you say that? He got to the top. Respect. Apologies from people who harmed him up the ladder while he was climbing up, right? Apologies. He made amends. He had peace with his family. He had peace with everyone else. Peace with those who accused him. It was not just his family members. So at the end of that particular story, you definitely have an amazing success story but how did it start so your story has not ended nor has mine may allah grant us true success firstly jannah paradise and secondly the success of this world why did i say firstly and secondly because if you don't get this one but you have that one you have still succeeded and if you have this one without that one you have failed and if you have both mashallah that's what we are asking for Alhamdulillah. We have a motivational evening and we have brilliant food. Wow, mashallah. Both. So my brothers, my sisters, look at how it started with jealousy. The story started with jealousy. How many of you, your own family may be jealous of you. It can happen. It has happened to those better than you. Family members jealous of me. Hang on, hang on. That's your path to ultimate success. Why get upset? Why get angry? Cool down. Wouldn't you like to be like the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam? MashaAllah. People say, no, I only want the victory bit. I don't want the first bit. No, hang on. You've got to have everything. It's a package. It comes as a package. You choose which one you would like. All of them have struggles in them and successes in them. So Yusuf alayhi salam went through something. Right at the beginning, an innocent child. People were jealous of what? What he looked like. Subhanallah. They were jealous of his looks. <laughs> Handsome fellow. 
Secondly, they were jealous of his connection with his father in particular. Why is our father favoring him? But there was no favoritism. I tell you what, I'm a father of quite a few children. Some of them are seated in your midst, mashallah. And I can tell you a fact. You love each child almost the same. At that stage of the, their lives, when the others were younger, they were loved in a similar fashion. A similar way, if you're a little bit older and you see your mom or dad kissing the little baby, more, mm, mwah, 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 you know, it doesn't mean they didn't do that to you, they did it. But now that you're older and you're watching that, it doesn't happen to me, hang on, do you know it did happen to you probably more than this? But now that you're older, don't allow yourself to feel that I'm not loved. But anyway, shaitan creeps in all the time, makes us think things that sometimes don't exist. And as a result, we tend sometimes to do wrong to those who are innocent. That's the other side of it. But on this side of it, people do things wrong to us when we're innocent. It can happen. It has happened. It shall happen in the future. It did happen. And it is happening probably now to a lot of people. So that's the beginning of the story. It starts off with a dream and so on. But from the negativity, it was the jealousy. لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا. Powerful point today with social media. Here, use Yaqub, Jacob, the father of Yusuf. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon both of them and the, all the messengers. He is telling his son, don't even relate the story to your own brothers because they might plot against you. Today, we relate our tale to the entire globe by putting it on social media. Wow, do you see the difference? And then when people plot and plan against us, we say, look at this, but you asked for trouble. Didn't you? According to this lesson, it may not be haram to show a few things, but it is definitely wrong to brag, to boast, to show off, and so on. This was not even showing off. It was a dream the man, ha the boy had. His father saying, don't tell your brothers because they may plot against you. It's my fear. The shaitan is real. In the shaitana. He says shaitan. He doesn't blame the kids. He says the devil, shaitan is an outright enemy of man. So my brothers, my sisters, it's very clear. When you show off, it's worse than just relating things. If we're taught to hold back from relating certain things that are not necessary for the world to know because they may plot your downfall, what about those things that people definitely would burn about? And you and I know that. We're living in an age. Some of us do it and wallahi, I won't lie to you, in order that others burn, let them burn, post it. Didn't we say that sometimes? Astaghfirullah. Let them see what I've got. Let them see. Yeah, it's not. Relax. Here is a beloved father. He is the father of a prophet. The son of a prophet. Yaqub, Jacob. May peace be upon him. And he's telling his son, You had a nice dream. Beautiful. Don't narrate it to your own brothers. Don't even narrate it. With us guys, we will post a dream. Oh, I had this dream and that dream. It's okay. We're not prophets. And there was no Jacob to tell that to us, right? But at the same time, doesn't it teach us a little lesson to say, hang on, not everything needs to be posted. Not everything needs to be told to the world. Sometimes if you have reason to do it, or there's a closed circle of people, you know they will be happy for you. You may say, mashallah, you know, we went to the Maldives. We really had a terrific time. And every moment I made dua that you came to. Allahu Akbar. You see there? Mashallah. You're thinking of someone else as well to say, every moment I was there, I went to Mecca. And every round I said, oh Allah, Bring so and so, if there's a name, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. That having been said, it's not haram. I'm not saying it's haram to show certain things. No, it's not. But I'm just saying we need to use our discretion and be wise about it. And remember, there are people out there who don't have what you have. There are people out there who perhaps are struggling, who want to achieve a certain thing for the last 20 years. And you came in five minutes, you did it. Do you not think that the heart is going to be hurt? 
There are people who don't have what you have. What are you going to do? The minimum you should do is to make a dua for them, to pray for them. Today we will be also speaking about the underprivileged across the globe. The minimum you should do is to pray for them, to dig into your pocket a pound or two or five would definitely make a difference. My brothers, my sisters. That's why they say it's good to give out a charity, a sadaqah. We talk about a sadaqah. Whenever something good happens, mashallah, give out a sadaqah, give a charity. Say alhamdulillah, tabarakallah, mashallah, Allahumma barik lahum. And whatever else it may be in terms of dua and supplication and goodness. Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. It started with jealousy. They plotted his downfall. They took him. They conned the father. They conned him as well. Let's go. We will race. Mashallah. We'll do what? Racing. The father says, hmm, I smell a rat. Literally, he says something fishy about this. And the son said, no way. What do you mean? He said, I fear that perhaps an animal might consume him, might attack him, harm him. Imagine that's exactly what they had planned. And he just said it out. Subhanallah, exactly what they planned. People plan. Sometimes your own family members plan your downfall. But that having been said, do not blame without evidence people for having done black magic on you or having been against you. And there's absolutely no evidence about it besides the whispers of shaitan against us. Do we pray our five daily prayers? Do we read our ayatul kursi and the protection supplications in the morning and the evening? If we don't do those, you can expect shaitan to whisper that your sister or your brother or your in-laws or whoever else it may be or your parents or your uncles or aunts are doing something against you. But that's just the whispers of the devil with no evidence. It's prohibited to say that. But at the same time, it's possible that people are jealous. And it's possible that your blood, kith and kin, could be jealous. It has happened to those better than you and I. Look at how the victims reacted. How do we react if we were a victim? We would turn the world upside down. Going from pillar to post, believing in everyone who tells you, you've got to cut 80 lemons in quarters and make sure that each one of them is exactly a quarter. And then you've got to squeeze three drops from each one of them into hot water and make sure that it's no more than 90 degrees and so on. And we like, we're doing that like it's revelation from the heavens and thinking we're getting better. Has it happened to you? If it did, they laughed at you. They fooled you. That's not a solution for something negative that has happened to you. You've got to turn to Allah in prayer, in supplication, in Quran, in dua. May Allah protect all of us. Say Amen. So Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam was a victim. They took him, they threw him into the well. Subhanallah. They threw him into the well. What did he do? Well, one beautiful aspect of the life of Yusuf alayhi salam throughout his challenges was that as he was being tested one after the other, he was always content with the condition he was in. He was always content with the condition he was in. It's amazing. In the well, what did he say? What happened to him? He was young, little. He waited. He waited for what? Until someone picked him up. When they picked him up, it was worse. It was worse because on one hand, he was glad to be alive. But the other hand, they found a little boy. Oh, wow. What good news. This is a boy. We're going to enslave him and sell him. And look what he looks like. Oh, amazing. They took him to the marketplace. They sold him. And guess what? That was bad enough because you're, you've just enslaved a free man. And you've taken him as a slave and sold him in the market. And as though that was not enough, the people who bought him plotted even more. One after the other. What did he say? Well, what's recorded in the Quran is what he said when he they planned against him they plotted against him when he didn't commit immorality they said we're going to jail you if you don't do what we're telling you to do we're going to jail you this was an instruction coming from a certain woman False accusation. Wow. So one after the other. 
Whatever he went through, we will go through in our lives. Have people ever been jealous of you? The answer is yes for all of us. Haven't they? You might be sitting and say, I've got nothing. Who's jealous? Of me? It has happened. It has happened. You've got, mashallah. You think you don't. You do. Allah has blessed you. And then? Planning your downfall. And then what happens? People accusing you falsely and I'm totally innocent. Yes, it will happen. It has happened. And guess what? Others believed them because they were the powerful or whoever else they were. And this was a little kid, a slave. And Allah sent proof and evidence. Clearing his name. But that wasn't good enough for those who had no connection with Allah in the first place. You know when people spread rumor or falsely accuse you and I or anyone else. If you have faith in God Almighty, in Allah Almighty, you will immediately understand without proper, concrete, solid evidence, this is a lie. That's what the Quran speaks about in Surah An-Nur. It has happened to Aisha radiallahu anha and others who are better than you and I. How can it not happen to you and I? It might be petty and smaller, but at the same time, there will be people whom we didn't expect to believe the nonsense and they believed it. Why? Because they just say, ah, you know what? It's possible because it's possible for them. That's why the Quran says that it's possible for them. But the Quran says, if you know it's not possible for you, someone better than you, you would say, impossible for them too. If I can't do this, they can't. That's what the Quran says. لَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكُمْ مُبِينَ When they heard the accusation against Aisha, the true believers, what was their way and their path? For them to say this is a lie because we think good of ourselves so we think good of her too Aisha radiallahu anha but Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam he said Rabbi sijinu ahabbu ilayya mimma yad'unani ilayya oh my lord Instead of saying clear my name, do you know what? He knew that these people, the name is already cleared by Allah. They're not interested in the clearance. Oh my Lord, remove, meaning oh my Lord. Sijin means prison is better for me than engaging in what they are asking me to engage. They've threatened me. Either they jail me or I follow or I do what they want, which is displeasing to you. I prefer to be in the jail. Why? Because it is not displeasing to you against me. Obviously, it's the wrath of Allah on them who falsely hatched the plan and so on. But this can happen in your life. People can do things. Your preference should always be to follow the path that is not displeasing to Allah for you. Always a preference. Short term, it might seem like a disgrace. Imagine, so and so jailed. Big deal. Better people than this person were also jailed. Sometimes an innocent person is proven guilty by perhaps a flawed system. Or perhaps some false evidence. Or perhaps something concocted. It's possible. It's very possible. It has happened. It's not like it's something new. So imagine how disgraceful it must have looked. When here is a young man being accused of something and being jailed. You intended harm, you intended evil against this woman. Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam went through that. And guess what? He took the prison sentence. At each stage he was happy. When he was enslaved, he served them well. When he was accused, he spoke to them well. When he went into the prison, he was so, so full of goodness that he decided now that I am here, let me use my time positively. So he made friends with the two people who were with him in the cell and he spoke to them. And what did he do? He taught them a thing or two. They had dreams and he, Allah gave him the ability to interpret dreams. So he interpreted those dreams. And you know what he did? He told them about Allah. He reminded them about the favor of Allah upon them. You know, you and your forefathers have been favored by Allah. Now think about it. Here's a man who's a young man who's gone into prison. We would be totally depressed. Imagine depressed going into prison. Totally. Whoa. 
no speaking to anyone no this imagine what a disgrace my family is going to think of me this and that person this and that and whoever else thinks of me and whatever whatever here's a man he came in he knows his innocence and he he got to work immediately instead of saying you know your parents are favored they've got money they've got wealth they've got this they no 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 your parents our parents our forefathers my forefathers have been favored What's the favor? The favor is that we believe in the one Lord who made us. That's what it is. We worship our maker and nobody else. We do not associate partners with our maker in worship. No act of worship is rendered to anyone besides he who made me. That's it. That was the message he delivered. And he told them, I call you to worship the same. Anyway, they heard him. They loved him. They learned from him. They Subhanallah, they took from him, they respected him, they were released as he had predicted. One of them was executed, the other one went to serve. And one day they called this man. Now this was the beginning of the other side. What we would term, oh, the success came. But look at how much hardship he had to go through to get to where Allah had destined for him to get. My brothers, my sisters, Allah has destined goodness for you. Be patient. Ride the waves. You will have hardship, difficulty. Inna ma'al usri yusran. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Indeed, with hardship, there is ease. And with the same hardship, there is another point of ease. You will always have ease. Look at the positives. Do you not have faith in Allah? That should keep you focused. Keep reading your Quran, your adhkar. Repeat the names of Allah if you will and you wish. That will help you focus. The praise of Allah as per the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It will help you in so many ways. Praise Allah. Take care of the duties that Allah has placed on your shoulder. Allah will take care of you. That doesn't mean you're not going to go through hardship. Do you know the hadith speaks about hardship? And it says the prophets have had the greatest of tests and challenges and hardship. And then who faces challenges after that? Those who are the closest to the prophets in example. And then those who are closer and so on. So the closest and then the next and the next and the next. You are faced with challenges. It doesn't mean you lost your home. Allah doesn't like you. It doesn't mean you, you made an accident with your vehicle. Allah doesn't like you. It doesn't mean you lost your job. Allah doesn't like you. It doesn't mean you've been through a divorce. Allah doesn't like you. It doesn't mean you've lost a loved one. Allah doesn't like you. In fact, because he likes you, you've been through that. He loves you. Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtalahu. When Allah loves someone, he tests them. If it was the opposite, none of the messengers would have gone through challenges. Not a, no one of them. But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went through the same. People were jealous of him. Yusuf alayhi salam. Similar to that, right? In a different way, but similar. People were, they accused him of everything. Wanting power, wanting money. Wanting authority. Wanting to be the leader. And on the other hand, a womanizer, a sorcerer, astaghfirullah al -azim. Things we shouldn't even be saying and repeating. But it's a lesson for us. If the greatest of creation had these challenges, what did he say? He said, oh Allah, oh Allah, if you are pleased with me, all this is nothing. This is okay. Subhanallah. If you are pleased with me, it's nothing. Now let me tell you something. If your hardship, your difficulty, your calamity, your loss brought you closer to Allah even one inch, it was a gift for you. And if your loss, your challenge, your difficulty, your calamity took you away from Allah long term, it was a punishment. And the opposite can be said. If the gift of Allah upon you made you drift away from Allah, it was a punishment. Allah gave you wealth. Allah gave you health. Allah gave you looks. Allah gave you everything. And you used that to go away from Allah. Oh, how can that be a gift of Allah? It can't. That's why Allah says, 
just like some people earn paradise through prayer and through worship of Allah, some people will earn paradise through spending from what Allah has given them. Read Surah Al-Layl. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى Allah Almighty says, who is going to be protected from hellfire? Those who have given their wealth. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى Those who gave. And Allah says, you said, وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا الْأَتْقَى الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى Who will stay away from hellfire? The one who was conscious of Allah and gave his wealth in zakah. Gave his, imagine this, this, these verses are just talking about wealth. الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى Subhanallah. وَمَا يُغْنِي عَنْهُ مَا لُوْ إِذَا تَرَدَّى Allah speaks about the miserly who hold up onto their wealth and keep counting it. I got 20, now I got 30, now I got 40, now I got 50. It's okay to count, you're a human being, but what of it did you give away to those who don't have? Did you give? If you did, alhamdulillah. I've got 20, I've got 40, I've given five away, I've got 35, I've got 45, I've got 55, I've given five away, I've got 50, I've got 60. Are you watching what we're doing? That's a Muslim. That's a believer. Because the hadith says, none of you are true believers until you love for others what you love for yourself. Allah's assistance will continue to be with you for as long as you are continuing to assist another person. Subhanallah. These are the gifts of Allah upon you and I. I want to solve my problems. The way to do it is to turn to your maker. And you cannot turn to your maker unless you, have, you are compassionate towards the rest of the creatures of the same maker. Subhanallah. We're seated here this afternoon. What connects us? A lot of things. Primarily, we've been created by the same maker. We're going to go back to the same maker. Subhanallah. We belong to Allah, don't we? When someone passes away, no matter who they are, what do we say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Don't we say that? Oh. And, and when someone we didn't expect, well, everyone passes away but someone suddenly oh gone <gasps> inna lillahi so it said a little bit louder right it said a little, with a little bit more expression <gasps> inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi. same thing you're saying what does it mean it means we belong to allah and we're all going to return to him so don't be deceived you're going to return to allah when you return to allah will it matter will it matter what car you were driving will it matter what designers you had will it matter what shoes you had will it matter Subhanallah, where you bought that from? When there are people struggling to find a, a little bit of fresh water to drink. May Allah Almighty bless us. So this story of Yusuf alayhi salam, the, the reason why I decided to repeat some of the points is because it happens in our lives. Don't despair. Allah is great. Your life, inshallah, will be coming up with much goodness, much successes, one after the other. Lots of victories that you go, uh, that you don't notice. They go unnoticed because we're concentrating on the challenges. We've met in this particular venue or at this venue a few times. Some of us. And I promise you one statement that so many people have come back to me and said, you know, this was a game changer. Was that, and I'm saying it again because the benefit of those who haven't heard it. Did you know that Allah promises you, he guarantees you that if you try to count his favors on you, you are never going to be able to count them. He guarantees that. But if you would like to count the challenges he's put in your life, you will be able to count them. Have you ever thought of that? If I ask you, how's life? You have a choice. We normally say, alhamdulillah, even if you're in a big mess, mashallah, may Allah grant us ease. But usually, you choose to either speak about the positives or the negatives. A believer is supposed to say, Alhamdulillah, because you are concentrating on the positives. But sometimes we are weak, we are man, and we start complaining, you know, oh, there's this challenge and that challenge. Think about it. Write your challenges in this book. I promise you, you won't fill the page. That's how many challenges there will be. Probably five, ten, what else? You failed your exam, that's one. You went through a divorce, that's the other. You lost one loved one, that's a third one. What else? These are big things, but you can count them, can't you? Right? You lost a job. What's the other? 
you, you have a certain health matter that you're dealing with. What's the other? Five things. Okay. What else? What about the favors of Allah upon you? Oh. What a verse. Allah says, if you try and count the favors of Allah upon you, no chance. You are not going to manage and succeed. You won't be able to count the favors of Allah. That's why I say, my brothers, my sisters, these challenges in your lives and mine, they're temporary, number one. They're limited, number two. And number three, as a result of those your path to that victory will be flung open. Had it not been for some of what you've been through, you would never taste the victory that's in your path. People have been divorced once, twice, then they get married to a king, mashallah, or a queen. And they're so excited and 30 years down the line, they said, you know what? Had it not been for this, I wouldn't have been here where I am. But there are others who gave up after the first knock. Gave up. Don't give up. Life is still, mashallah. We don't have a guarantee, but we have to keep living. So my brothers, my sisters, I pray that these few words I've said would actually help us look forward to navigate through the challenges that Allah throws in our direction. And we look at them as opportunities to gain closeness to Allah. We become closer to Allah. We're happy upon all these conditions. Yusuf alayhi salam was happy when he was in the well. He was happy when they removed him. He was happy when they sold him. He was happy when they accused him. He was happy when they decided to jail him. He was happy in the jail. He was happy when they forgot him in the jail for some years. And he was happy when he came out. And subhanallah, that was the ultimate success. His brothers kept on saying this and that and whatever until the last minute when they saw, whoa, this was something crazy. We planned the downfall of this person and it was through our plan, through our plan of his downfall, Allah decided to raise him above all of us. They realized it. They sought forgiveness. Maybe people may ask you forgiveness one day. They may not. It's okay. But Allah is the greatest. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد.